is not a boy. Chapter 5, Auntie Cecily and the Lamb, Part 2. Oh, he is such a darling, isn't he? What a perfectly lovely petty lamb, said Auntie Cecily in her bosh, posh voice. My ma'am thought Auntie Cecily made a good person to have around because she thought we would copy her posh voice and get on in the world like she had done down south. But we never copied Auntie Cecily. Anyway, Auntie Cecily couldn't have been all that good because she didn't know anything about farms. Oh, look at those ewes! In their meadow, she said, looking at our mother sheep in our paddock. They're called sheep and they're in our paddock, I said, surprised at her not knowing. But she just looked at me from the top of her eyes with her head nodding a bit. I knew she would think this was rude, but I'd never heard of a ewe and we never called our fields meadows. I was surprised that Auntie Cecily did not know that. She certainly didn't know about farms, but as I've said, she knew about fashion. I stared at her lovely red coat, which matched the colour of her rug, and my eyes jumped at the bright colour when I looked at it. I love your coat, Auntie Cecily, and I like the woolly collar. It's just like Mum's hair when it's permed. Mum's black curls were tight and hard, not like Auntie Cecily's, which were brown and soft and big and bouncy. Oh, darling, it's an astrakhan collar. The wool comes from little lambs from abroad. Do lambs have to be killed to make your collar? Darling, I imagine so, but I do not want to think about it. All I want to think about is fashion. But I expect they did have to be killed and skinned, I went on. Oh, please, I do not want to think about that. It's perfectly hard thinking about anything suffering, especially these little lambs. Let's change the subject, shall we? Her head nodded quite a bit and her big curls bounced up and down. What is the name of your petty lamb? Well, I hadn't really thought about it before. I usually just called it pet lamb. I know, darling. Let's call it Astrakhan. That's a very nice name. Yes, Astrakhan it is. I wasn't keen, I can tell you. She was supposed to be changing the subject. But we were really talking about those little lambs in another country that had to be killed to make a collar for her coat. I didn't say anything though. I didn't want to risk being rude again. Mam wouldn't like it. Right, that's settled then. Now, why don't we go and ask your mummy if she'll buy you a new coat like mine. I hadn't grown out of my old coat yet and you can't just ask for new things on our farm when there are animals to be fed and machinery to be serviced or new machinery to be bought. The farm was our livelihood but Auntie Cecily didn't seem to know this. I told you she didn't know about farming. My mam always makes my coats, I said with a shrug. My mam used to use her old coat, cut it up and turn it and then cut out the pattern for my new coat. I had to wear somebody else's coat. But oh, how I longed to go into Hull and go to a posh shop and buy a brand new coat. Auntie Cecily smiled and looked again at me from the top of her eyes and her head nodded quite fast. She jumped up with her legs still pressed together and she knocked bits of grass and muck off her rug. 
Let's see what Mummy says, she said, tiptoeing as best she could, trying not to dirty her satin shoes. I knew what Mum would say. We never bought any clothes from shops except knickers. Asti. I decided to call him Asti. It was a good name as long as I didn't think of Astrakhan. Ran after us, bleating. We shut the gate, but he got through a gap and still followed us to our house. He was wanting some food. His fat stomach was sticking out like a big barrel. And he wasn't hungry and he didn't need any food. But he must have thought it was always worth asking. We shut the door on him at our house. But when we were inside, we heard a banging and a scraping. Oh, darling, what is that dreadful noise? Oh, it's Astrakhan banging on our door for some more food. Take no notice. He knows the answer's no. I thought I'd better say Astrakhan so that I didn't seem rude because Mam was there. Mummy, your darling little girl would really like a new and fashionable coat like mine, said Auntie Cecily, turning her attention to more important matters with her head nodding a bit and her curls gently going up and down. I haven't got time to make a new coat, said Mam. And she sat at her sewing machine, making a new work shirt for Dad. Well, I wouldn't mind one from a posh shop in Hull, I said gently. It was always worth asking, just like Asti thought. Though you knew what the answer would be. You know we haven't got money like that. The farm comes first, Mam said, and even Auntie Cecily staring at Mam from the top of her eyes and her curls nodding furiously didn't really make any difference. My Mam pressed the pedal even harder on her machine and off it went at top speed, making such a noise that she wouldn't have heard us if we spoke to her again. In the end, Auntie Cecily gave up and went back home down south to London. Then, a few weeks after she had gone, and we'd all forgotten about her, Posty came wobbling about with a big parcel on his bike. He came into our backyard and gave it to Mam. Asti came running and gave him a big butt. He was getting used to doing that now he was getting strong. He never butted me. He butted everybody else. I was his lifetime friend, though, and he wouldn't hurt me. He was always trying to get food from me, though, and nuzzling against me. There was plenty of grass and plenty of food in the sheep trough, but he still came after me. So I started carrying some oats in my pocket and gave them to him every now and again. It made him follow me more. Anyway, back to that parcel. The postmark said London, and for one little minute I did think that it might be a new coat for me, with a fashionable astrakhan collar. I tried not to think about the little lamb from abroad who had had to die to make that collar. Mam tore open the parcel on our big wooden table, and we all stood round. It wasn't often that a parcel came. Well, we never had parcels, really. I stood there, hoping against hope for a new coat. It wasn't a coat for me. It was hundreds of lengths of material from Auntie Cecily's workplace. There were samples of material from her shop, much bigger and better than our remnant shop. There were last year's fashion down south, But that fashion hadn't reached us yet up north, so we were very pleased. I just stared in disbelief at that parcel full of treasure. There were embroidered flowers, little bow prints, stripes and bold bright shapes of all kinds. There were silks and satins and cotton and wool, rough and smooth, in more colours than the rainbow. We all pushed forward to grab our favourite pieces and hold them against our shabby dresses. 
Soon they were all over our room. We liked this best, then changed our minds and liked that one more. You just couldn't decide. But one of my favourites was little Bo Peep in her beautiful long dress looking for her sheep. Mam sat down at her sewing machine there and then and it was so unlike her in the morning when she should have been working on our farm but she just couldn't resist and soon her machine was rattling away and she was stitching material together in top gear. It went. Skirts and frocks flew out from under a needle and after that came a beautiful patchwork quilt. It was for me. I couldn't believe it, how soon she had finished it. She stuffed it with sheep's wool and put it on my bed. And I was holding rough bits and smoothing shiny bits of material between my fingers all night long. But best of all was Bo Peep in that corner over there looking for her sheep.